Hello YouTubers, um, my name is Martin and I'm going to show you um, some aspects of three editors aside of Lightroom to edit this photo that I've taken last week. Long story short, uh, previously I used Adobe Lightroom and we had long Photoshop and I had a Creative Cloud. Uh, it costed me 12 to 29 euros, which is about 14, uh, almost 15, uh, 14 dollars and that for a month which meant that uh, it should reach uh, 150 dollars a year for a photograph enthusiast that i am uh, not making my living out of it um, i had to give value to my money so and using adobe creative cloud was not it so i wanted a more permanent a solution as Luminar from Mac Fun Guys. I've tried the XO, but it was too expensive also. And I've tried also previously the first version of uh, On One um, Photo Raw 2017 and was not happy with it. And then I've decided to try it out again uh, after version 0.5, which is this one. This one is uh, to 27.5 so it was released in um, June and I'm going to give you one of my aches uh, editing my photos since I've left uh, Lightroom I need something to manage my photos so uh, Luminar when they launched they told that they were going to release an asset management um, evolution to the software and I'm still waiting. I've contacted them three times and still waiting. Also, they do not have a lens correction and uh, they are only going to launch lens correction in November. And as for the asset management, um, it's only going to be in 2018. Hopefully, I'm starting to think that that will not be true. I don't know why is it so hard to do only um, an asset management so that's the story and then uh, but I love Luminar I loved Luminar and for to use Luminar and still being able to manage my photos in one place I use photos as a catalog and photo management only as to edit my raw files I needed something that could go deeper than photos does so Normally, the problem is, and I'm going to explain you what the problem is, when I edit the photos, um, the photo in photos, I, tend, I need to come here, then go to view or something like image and set as I want to process the raw, and then I start processing the raw. I use Luminar as an extension, which is pretty easy. Then it goes to Luminar. One thing that uh, it takes time, it takes time to load. Luminar is a bit slow, um, averagely slow. I have a mm, MacBook from 20, 2016 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It shouldn't take this long to process. And it's always, every, th every time you do something, it's always image processing, image processing, image processing, and doesn't remember the rendering. And um, what I needed to show you, was basically okay, so I need to rotate this image clockwise and it doesn't let me to do so so I need to come here rotate it and go back to Luminar so limitations I'm start uh, I started to look myself and see a lot of limitations on having this setup using photos as a f photo management for photo management and editing in them in Luminar. Why is that? I have to do some things in photos and another thing is in Luminar. And then when I do in Luminar and go back to photos, I cannot come back in Luminar and tweak a little more. Everything is lost. So it's non-destructive since in photos I can revert what I've done in Luminar, but I cannot go back to Luminar and do it again. So just to show you another thing that um, is not so great about On One, 
and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So let's do something like this, something like this. Let's push the shadows up, bring the weights, give the clarity about uh, 30. And then let's look how the photo went. I'm doing it this very quick, just for showing purposes. Now it's image processing. You're gonna see something um, it's processing the image. Every time I move the image or do something, it starts processing again and reveals. And then I go come back and processes again and reveals. This is very annoying, but I'm getting used to it. So I have some uh, grain. This is not noise. This is grain that in black and white photos, it's beautiful. And then I'm going to save changes. Okay. One thing I'm going to show you is then when I go back to Luminar, I cannot tweak what I've done previously. I have to do an over the picture and do something over it, or I have to revert it in uh, photos to um, to do that. And another thing that's um, very poor on on one photo raw editor is uh, you do not have the option of working out with levels. Neither you have the option of uploading your photo directly to your social media. Either it is Flickr or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. You do not have that option on on one photo raw. And another thing if Photo Raw does, you're going to, I'm going to show you, is like when you export a black and white image to TIFF format in 16 bits, which it doesn't allow you to choose if you want it an 8 bit or 16 bit, it somehow damages the image and creates pixelated grain, kind of grain, which is very annoying and is not up to par other products that On One has. So I have this image. If I go back to Luminar, you can see that my previous um, edit is not available. Why? Luminar only edits one photo at a time. One photo at a time. At most, if you have a set of 10 photos with exactly the same light and you want a, the exactly same edit, you can do a batch processing, but then you have to first save your presets, your settings to a file and then apply it as a batch processing to all those 10 pictures. It's not that viable as a working horse when you take come out to a job and take 100 pictures and you want to edit them, edit them on the fly. Uh, it's not helpful at all, but it's an amazing program in the every other aspect. It has adjustment layers. It has a ton. You can set up your workflow and it has a ton of tweaks and features you can use to enhance your photos. It's an amazing thing. It just needs lens correction and only needs asset management. Those two things to make it a brutal power horse in the photography world. And they can't manage to do that quickly. I just don't understand. It's extremely annoying. And But I'm out of options and I'm going to show you why. Okay, so nothing here. I have to do it all over. The only form I have to do it is come here and revert the image original and do it all over again, which I'm not going to you do it because I have to show you another thing like the export quality of an image in photos. So I have this image in photos. Then I would just want to upload, export the image to a TIFF format for printing or whatever. I'm going to do to a TIFF format, which is the best quality photo any program will allow you to export to. And I'm going to export this one photo. I'm going to choose TIFF format. I'm going to choose 16-bit. Let's give it the best. Let's go um, sRGB or most compa compatible. I'm going to leave that at full size. I do not want anything more. And then I'm going to tell it to export to this entitled folder as a T format and I'll do export. And then I will do lately a comparison between these three files and how do they export it. I can use Luminar as a standalone application. So I can open an image in Luminar I'm going to open exactly the same image and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did. And uh, now I am in a standalone mode. It's loading the raw, it's converting the raw, and it's going to do a better job on the photo. And why? Because when I use it as an extension, he's using, he's converting a photo that has already been converted from raw 
uh, by photos. So it went through two conversions and uh, it, that's not very good on a raw. So another con on the workflow. And um, I just want to, uh, now I can rotate it on photos. I could not because it was an, an, an extension. Now I can rotate it. Let's go to black and white. Let's try to give it the same thing that I gave before. Bring the highlights. It does a better job in the highlights than it did on photos. Let me give a bit of a boost here. Let me reduce the whites. Let me bring the clarity also to 30, where it was. Let me do 100% zoom. As you can see, constantly thinking. And now this is very beautiful grain. As you can see, um, much better grain than in photos. A bit of, no, not much, but it's noticeable that since it's black and white, I like grain on black and white photos. I'm not going to do anything more. I'm just, uh, if I want to continue with it this longer, I need it to save this photo and when need save I say save history to document and then I would be able to uh, continue edit and it will re remember but I, you have to do this photo by photo one photo after one photo after one photo if you have a set of 100 photos you can imagine how long it would take so please Luminar make the asset management cataloging don't need but photo drawing non-destructive to make our lives easier I don't understand how difficult that can be so I'm not going to do this I'm going to export the file also to a TIFF format and the difference here is that I can choose TIFF and I can say also no compression none whatsoever I want let's give it 300 pixels which is a standard uh, per inch, let's do original, sharpen none, TIFF, let's go to um, the same folder, untitled folder, but I'm going to give this a loom, luminar TIFF, okay, and let's do the save, now it's saving, and then I'm going to show you one great feature in uh, photo raw of one on one but there are so many other things that i cannot explain and then let's go and quit luminar don't save because i just want to preview the final product now i'm here with the same uh, raw what uh, on one gives you is um photo management but not cataloging you have to catalog uh, your photos and create the folders it just navigates through the folders that you have created and backed up okay nothing else it does not do cataloging but you can add t tag word uh, tags uh, words um, classify give it colors favorites that makes it easier to find uh, it, it, it will index your uh, trees, uh, folder trees, but it will not create a catalog, okay? So, but this is a good feature because you can go from a folder to a folder and then go back and try to view what is inside. So it's a lot better than photos, nevertheless not useful. One other thing, when you are in preview mode of this picture, you cannot, you cannot rotate the, fi the picture. To rotate the picture, you have to be at the previous view, and then you select the picture, and then you can rotate it. Why? Don't know. Then let's do the same thing. Let's go to develop mode. It gives you the metadata. You can upgrade the metadata. It's a good looking program, not as fast as they say it is. And you will understand why in a bit. Let's give it a 20 of contrast again. Highlights, let's do in highlights. It does a better job than Luminar, but it's not that strong, that bigger difference. Now the shadows. I'm going to add this setting. Okay, let's go back up. And the shadows, let me 
push black the whites let me give structure is the same as clarity let's give a 30 in a structure and now the shadows in this is absolutely amazing what it can do this is too brutal to do but it's amazing it's the only feature that i was amazed in this program was the shadows handling the rest i did not find that amazing i found it confusing uh, but let's not do that much let's push a bit like the others give it a twist at about 30 let's go go at 100 percent now one great thing about this program is that it's um it imme you immediately preview what are you doing you do not have that loading processing stuff that you have on um on um uh, luminar or photos okay and uh, you immediately pre preview i think this is about the same this is grain but it doesn't handle grain as well as luminar as you can see but the worst thing is when you say okay then let's do an export okay let's do an export and then you're going to do he's preparing to export he's rendering the image he's loading the image and i say no i want to export to a t format it doesn't give me any other option so i'm going to leave it at that i cannot change anything i just ha can say to the curve folder prevent override okay ta -ta -ta, my name and then i'm going to export this image and then is loading the raw file from the basis he's going to apply the settings that i've set it up and then after he's going to create the photo and then he saves okay but okay i can wait this long on a photo but not rotating not being able to um do some things on this program just turned me off but the quality of the export is something that uh, i'm going to show you now now i'm going to quit these three programs and then let's show uh, the difference this is luminar this was photos it was previously and now this is from on one okay and uh, let me put the names correctly for us to see on one this was from photos So you can expect Luminar 144 megabytes is much shorter file than um, photos. And now I'm going to preview photos. And then I'm going to open Luminar. And then I'm going to open on one. And I'm going to put the image side by side for you to see. They almost look identical. Okay. So no worries about that. But what turns me on off is like if I do an actual size view you can see that this is not the same as it was on the program this start lost the grain and started to look noise okay mushy bad export from photos as for luminar I wasn't expecting too much and but actually this is grain and not noise Okay, so it handled it very well. A shorted file, and this is grain. This doesn't look as mushy as the photos. Photo. But now, here's the big surprise. What is this? This is not grain. This is not noise. This is pixels. It looks pixelated and that is not acceptable for a program from on one and uh, this will show in a large print this will show this is not grain okay let's do a side-by-side -side comparison on both this is grain this is pixelated okay this is not acceptable i cannot work with a program like that and we it will take me and it doesn't have the feature to import from other programs which is it's going to be a pain 
and I was not that impressed about uh, these programs. And um, that's it.